Hey guys, Quicksilver Gaming here with another War Note Battle Report. This is a casting of the SD League Division 4 quarterfinals between Zoot A Barbaris and Sneaky Kid. Uh, Barbaris goes by mail on Discord, so I'll be calling him that for this series. In game one, we have Mail playing the 35YA, and Sneaky Kid is on fourth Moto Shootson. The map they've chosen is Two Lakes. They banned Hess and Mount River, so that is two series in a row where the players have banned Mount River. And then for their banned divisions, we have 27th Moto Stroke, 82nd Airborne, KDA, and 2nd Infantry. So just looking at the deployment here, um, you can see that Sneaky Kid, who is the blue player, is pushing into, I believe that is Zulu, if I recall, and then also making a nice push into Oscar, which is something I like to see from blue player um, going and defending their own X-ray over there. Not, not the greatest thing because it's really hard for red to go down there. I would like blue to at least go up to these trees, but preferably you pressure Oscar. Um, he is going pretty heavy on helos. He's bringing in 82... Uh, Behind on each side, so they've got decent amount of anti-tank rockets and anti-infantry rockets, and then he's also bringing the AA Heinz, which have the air-to-air -air missiles and then the anti-infantry rockets with them. And then over here, you can see Jaegers, Jaeger Metis, Jaeger MG, Jaeger Fuhrer, um, just going into Zulu. What do we have over here? Jaegers, Jaeger MG, Jaeger Metis, and Jaeger Fuhrer. So. I don't know, looks like he's probably going to bring a CV later to capture this by the looks of it. And then uh, red side is male, and he is doing what red does and pushes into Zulu and kind of uh, takes Lima passively, which is what I like red to do. I mean, taking these trees is red, really good. Taking this area is red, really, really good. And... I mean, red basically starts on top of it. I, it very interestingly balanced map, but other YouTubers can talk about this a little bit. more. So he's got an Akula moving up, which that should be pretty, pretty interesting. I don't know how the Akula versus the MI-24 will do. Um, and then his command vehicle, you know, just moving into... Was that Lima? Yeah, Lima and Zulu. And then this guy moving into Papa and then into Oscar over here. So he's got Spetsnaz, Conkers, Dasan, Niki, and more Spetsnaz moving into Oscar over here. Big push. Uh, Dasan, Niki in BMDs, Spetsnaz, Spetsnaz, lots of Spetsnaz, Iglas, um, and then the Gaz 66. So he's got a pretty good counter to a Hilo Rush. Um, so let's dive right on in and see how this battle goes. Forces rolling out at this time. I would like to thank all of you who are subscribers to the channel. And if you're not, go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you like my content. Um, also, any likes and comments really, really help push the video out there. And I really, really appreciate all of you that have been doing that. Um, if you don't know what to say in a comment, something like GG, I like turtles. Or, um, as some of you keep saying, uh, more Koch. You guys really like uh, seeing Koch, even though I think some of you might just be Koch with alternate accounts posting that. So here we go, engagement over on Zulu. The Helos doing decent damage, but also taking... I mean, he's got the Gaz 66s, and both of those Helos go down, and I don't think those Helos really took anything out unfortunately and then AA going for the Akula but I don't think that's a great trade although he does get out there get out of there fine over here uh this push however went really really in favor for sneaky kids so um these helos absolutely decimated um absolutely decimated and if he doesn't if he's not careful this uh, this BRDM is going to die. But those helos on the left did really, really well. The helos over at Zulu didn't do well at all. Uh, this is the problem, though, and this is what I talked about 
in Pasta vs. Farid is Red Player taking this forest um, because this is the real road going into Zulu. You can also go down this road, but the pathing of the troops, you can see they like to go down this road. And if you have uh, anything with ATGMs, which I can't remember if BMD... Oh, they've got Conkers, all right. Yeah, so this is nasty. Anything going down this road, most likely dead. And then I think all the helos are down. So not looking good right off the bat for Sneaky Kid. Sneaky Kid being blue player, male or Zut A Barbaris, which I, I'm terrible at French. So, and I believe he is French because his tag is FRA. And here we go. This is what I'm talking about, BMD2s. Uh, decent micro by Sneaky Kid there, unloading immediately, but he lost one uh, to that ambush. And, I mean, this is this is bad. Um, having those guys there is pretty bad. And because those guys are there, he's now moving troops to defend this objective alpha. Um, he needs to get a CV over there. He's wasting, wasting points, though. And this guy, unfortunately... Okay, he does realize he's taking a bad path, so he is changing the path of those Chicherons in the SPW-60. Um, I think, well, you know, he's he's pushing up, although I like this. He's not pushing into Oscar itself. He's basically said, you can have Oscar. That's fine. Um, I will go for Zulu and Lima and Papa, and I will more defend Papa instead of push into Oscar. But that initial attack, uh, it was very interesting. I mean, Mail lost a crap ton going for Oscar. And unfortunately, I wasn't wasn't able to pay attention to both attacks at once. But those Hines over at Oscar absolutely annihilated the entirety of Mail's uh, push into Oscar. But then on the flip side on Zulu, that's where Mail had all of his anti-aircraft capabilities and just absolutely picked him apart and this is i mean this is looking bad already for sneaky kid does get a shot into that bmd2 what kind of atgm is it though that's firing oh it's the uh it's the kokon interesting that that's not doing more damage to the bmd2 it must be missing but we got a MiG-29 out here versus MiG-21, and then is he going for the Hilo? He is. He pushed the Hilo off. Shulka's not really going to do enough to the MiG-29. I don't think it landed a single hit, although there's some cohesion damage to that MiG-29. Um, oh, yeah, like a little. It, it's not terrible. Going in for another run on the hind, and oh, oh, he landed it in time. Okay. I was wondering what happened there, but nice, nice micro there by Sneaky Kid. But this is, he's got BMD2s backing up his de Desan Mikis. I mean, these guys are screwed. He's going to take this objective and it's going to be bad. Oh, the MiG-23 coming in, but he has the Akula. Not, I'm not sure he knows what he wants to do here, but the Akula is moving in. It does have AA missiles. I don't know if it's going to lock in. So this, he might get these guys, which will be... Oh, okay. We got one, but that was bad. Losing that uh, MiG-21 over there. Not really good payoff. Did try to take the Akula out. He does have the Shulka shooting the Akula. You can see the Akula is death spiraling trying to get the Akula out of there. He might have just barely done it, and it looks like he has. He has moved a CV over here, but um, Mail notices it right away. Over here, though, Mail pushed up with the Spetsnots. As I said, I would have probably just given up on Oscar and pushed troops over here and just defended it, because you're putting so much pressure onto Sneaky Kid over here. The Sneaky Kid really can't afford to push from Oscar into, I believe it's Papa. I mean, that is just so far. Whereas over here, he's got problems with Zulu. And then more importantly, he has problems with Alpha. And he had to back off his CV over here. He has a T-55 incoming, but I don't know if that's enough. The Shulka is 
I mean, it's going to die. It's been spotted. I mean, it sees the MI-24. MI-24 death spiraling. It's stunned. Could you imagine being in a helicopter that spins like that? It got a missile off. Oh. But it died, and they're fire, from, fire and forget missiles. Or not fire and forget, they're, uh, guided missiles. So yeah, he, I mean, he's pushing up with Spetsnaz over here. He did kill, was it the Einsatzgruppe? So I believe those are just your Reki Fallschirmjäger. Um, another Fallschirmjäger MG destroyed over here. Bringing up a supply truck to supply the BMV-2. Bringing up a CV. Uh, because, I mean, he's, he's got a BMT-2 right there. Oh, good god, if he can get a side or rear shot on that. Oh, they see each other. Okay. Ah, and yeah, I mean, a T-55 should annihilate it at close range. Um, that is the problem with the ATGMs. Since they are guided, you do need to make sure that your vehicle is alive. Um, this Vestnauts is on a 1v2. This Vestnauts needs to move. I mean, these buildings are burning, so really just needs to double up on that building there. It sounds like he has fire support, though, in the form of BMD-2s. BMD-2s. I'm sorry if I say a P in there, it just feels natural to me. Uh, does have a MiG coming up, and I don't believe he has any AA over here. He is bringing up a 66, a Gaz, which should help out but i mean that's actually a pretty good push so maybe that's a good idea now i mean he's got pretty good control over here t55 if you can get an atgm shot i mean these guys have two more shots left they should be able to take out the t55 and sure enough they do good micro over there by mail um things are looking pretty bad for sneaky kid i mean it's it's bad enough when red gets zulu but when red also gets alpha this side of the board just becomes really really difficult and you can see sneaky kid doesn't have a lot left and these guys here they're in a lot of trouble because the pathing this bmd uh two oh it doesn't have any anti-tank missiles but it has its auto cannon still and that'll absolutely shred those transport trucks so it's still in a good position even without oh but he's got the supply truck coming up so he might uh, 123 i can't remember what the resupply is on these 90 for the resupply so it barely has enough to resupply i believe but it should open up it might be just no it's in range yep auto cannon fire coming in doesn't do enough ah if he had the atgms loaded up that would be great looks like he did push back mail over here which is good so i mean he does still have oscar but he really i mean he he really needs to take this back first these guys are just they're gonna die i mean he's pushing up hard with the jaegers and the chisharungs i mean these jaegers okay they got out of the truck in time what on earth was oh was that the oh was the lgb1 came in with a bombing run I was like, that was too big to be man portable, which it was, you know, 500 kilogram uh, guided missiles or bombs. Absolutely devastating. Um, he has BMD-2s on the flank over here. That's pretty nasty. Um, but as I said, if I was male, I would just, you know, sort of create a defensive line over here, not worry too much because... Sneaky Kid has tons of resources over there and almost nothing over here. And you've got all of these spots. I mean, you could defend, build up. It does have this Afklarar. What can it really do? I mean, oh, well, I mean, if it can hit the Iglas in their uh, UAZs and Gazes, then that's pretty bad. A2 over here, I don't see much. So I guess he's cleared out. This area pretty... I'm actually impressed that he was able to clear that out. But, I mean... I have to see... The, I mean, those... Yeah, this is the problem. The Jaegers, they're being shot over here by BMD-2s. I mean, he's got the HE bomb on the Metis, so they should die. So, good. But you gotta push up and 
Fortunately, you've got 80 GMs, and there goes a BMP one there. So I guess this Jaeger, I mean, it's going to live for now. He's spotted... Spotted the Igla, but MI-24 should be able to absolutely annihilate this. I mean, if it continues to see it, I think it's going in and out of line of sight is one of the problems. Uh, he is microing it. That MiG-29, I mean, look how far forward he's able to put his A assets. Uh, MiG-29 on MiG-29 action. At, it's a tie, as it should be. MiG-21 following up, but now it's going for the MI-24. But he's going over all of these, uh, I mean, well, I see he's going all, over all these A assets, but it's just Iglas. Where, kind of kind of looking through Mail's card, he has Strellas, he has the Descent Gaz 66s and Iglas. I don't think I've seen a single Strella on the battlefield yet. Um, it's just been Iglas and Gas 66s, but he takes that MiG-21 down anyways. Um, I mean, you've seen Iglas fire at you. I, I don't think the Mi-24 is that important to lose another MiG-21 when you're already behind. But that's... Oh, this is... this is bad. Now... Oh, well, that Conkers is in a terrible building. A Conkers needs to be up here. Oh, it would, like, if you had the recon. Oh, it's a Falsham Eager Metis. If you had a recon in that building and a Conkers in that building, you'd probably see these BMD2s and actually maybe take them out. But this is going to be bad for any reinforcements coming down this road. He's basically cut this off. Um, and I like this. He isn't committing too much more over here. I mean, he's got this Dasaniki Metis moving up, which is good. He needs something because otherwise he could theoretically push some troops this way. And he's moving a couple more guys over here to protect, which is good. Yeah, just protect against any sort of push this way. Uh, sneaky Kid, being sneaky, did manage to retake this zone, which is, is good, but he is so far behind 1,107. LGB-1 coming in, that T-55 is not long for this world, and it goes down. Shulka, I mean, it's going to do some damage to the LGB-1, which, you know, makes it not reload as fast, which is good, because those LGB-1s reload so fast, but you really need some proper A assets over here. He's got two cubs or coobs. Um, otherwise he's just got the Manpad, Strellas, and Shulkas. I feel like both lists are... Well, I mean, he's got the Strellas. Mail does. But I feel like both lists may be a little light on AA that can actually deal with aircraft, and that was a huge win for Sneaky Kid right there in that tree line, taking them out. That was, that was really, really strong. This conquers, speaking a strong, strong position there, uh, forcing the BMP-1s to smoke. What is... Oh, that's that conquers. I mean, just ATGM missiles flying back and forth, and BMP-1 goes down. That conquers took a basically glancing blow. It's stunned, but now you've got the MI-24. Yeah, it's just overwhelming firepower over here. It does, does have Shishirungs up there, but they're not going to win a fight against Spetsnaz, especially with an MI-24 backing it up. MiG-27, sneaky shot, oh my goodness. Oh, I thought he was going to get both, but not really good against taking out um, ground guns, but he's just got such a strong fire, fire base over here, doing really well. Uh, I must have missed it, the Afklar must have killed the Descent Niki that moved up over here. Really not trying over here, but uh, I say that. That's not going to go well. I'll try to keep that in the screen so any of you that are paying attention a little bit more than me can see what happens to this BMP-1. I'm more paying attention to that T-55 commander that just went down. That's a big loss over here. MiG-29, not really... Uh, I, don't, I don't know if that's the trade I want to make there. With all of those Iglas. He got out unscathed though. That just seems really scary. 
if Mail bought a single Strella and put it back here, I feel like... I, I feel like he wouldn't care at all about these AA assets coming in. See what he does with this LGB1. There we go. So there's the BMP1 down. Moto shoots in now. I'm actually amazed Sneaky Kid caught that in time. Um... I guess he's moving over here to spot these guys. He finally got the Conkers over here. Oh, but auto cannons can... T oh, that feels so bad. I forgot the auto cannons are really good, but he did get one. I'm so glad he moved that Conkers into that building. So, yeah, I mean, you get a you get a recon in that building and the Conkers in the building next to it are the same building. This BMP-1 saw the missile coming no oh oh he smoked too late but didn't matter because he made it this aa oh he got the lgb1 mig 29 doing work over there now it's a mig 29 versus mig 29 fight however that mig 29 multitasking does pay the price though um not too shabby though and pretty good bombing run over there i mean it killed a md maybe it's not that good of a bombing run but he didn't lose anything but his migs will be out of action for a little while he is spamming out his iglas which smart because he's taking lots of damage from aircraft he's got a pretty solid fire base i don't like this conquers up that far though uh, because these Alphaclar are going to shred it. Does have the commander moving up? T-55 just eating Metis shots. They have the... Well, it's called the Metis ATGM. This is going to suck. Yep, T-55 goes down. That was... Pretty sure that was a side shot over there. And especially, by the way, the Russian tank is tossing its turret. Feels like got him uh, right in the ammo magazine. Always the best kind of firework display. Russian T-55s, T-72s, T-64s launching their turrets sky high. Pretty fun to see. Interestingly enough in this game, side note, uh, is how the Abrams toss their turrets when they wouldn't really toss their turret because they've got the blow-up panels. I guess you could have an instance where they toss the turret, but they're specifically designed with the blow-up panels to blow out all the ammunition uh, out the side. So you will see a catastrophic explosion, but it's designed to keep the people inside alive as long as possible. That was just absolutely brutal. That I mean, he's just getting absolutely picked apart by this fire base over there. The BM BMD2, uh, I don't know how far the Spetsnaz, I mean, they, they can't fire too far, but you've got the MI24 over there. He's just being picked apart moving up this road, losing both of those BMP-1s pretty bad. He got the infantry out in time, but really that infantry is useless right now. The Ofclar did finally kill the Conkers as I thought it would. Um, man, sneaky. He's being so sneaky. He he saw his uh, Conkers go down, so he knew there was the Ofclar there, so he sent his Descent Commander wide. And now he's probably trying to get about here or so. I mean, he could even... I don't know, can those guys take out the Moto Schutzen? I believe there's only four of them. So, who knows? Aircraft going down. And then Einsgruppe going down. Okay, so that was Mail's MiG-29. feel like he's running low on aircraft, although I look over at his roster and he's got quite the aircraft tab. So probably not coming anywhere close to running out of aircraft. Another MiG-29 coming out. MI-24 getting a little cheeky there. That Strela man pad is probably going to take it down. Stunned it. MiG-29 on MiG-29 action. Basically who fires first? Well, okay. The mutual destruction. Helped out by the <laughs> insane Igla spam over there. Sneaky Kid really needs something to go his way soon, and this doesn't help either that during this entire thing, uh, Mail has created a push into Oscar, and it looks like he should win this push. 
He's got the Akula. The Sotniki. Sotniki Commander. Giving them the extra veterancy, as you can see there. MI-24. He's got the Igla. He needs to unload the Igla. He needs to get that Igla up moving. He's got these Spetsnots. They need to probably get into those trees, I would imagine. Uh, finally got that BMD-2 down. Strellas, if they could get into range, which looks like they're about in range of the Akula, but I believe... I believe that Akula is low? No, it's not. It's flying high. He needs to get low. Akula is about to eat it. Trying to keep over here. Looks like the Descent Commander, Descent Niki, is about to get in there. That Offclar, not really sure what it's doing. And uh, Oscar... Oscar is males. I mean, that, to me, that does it. That's, yeah. And right there, Sneaky Kid realizing and agrees with me right there. So, as far as kill ratio, it's not incredibly lopsided. Obviously, male with the 1.16 to 1, and then Sneaky Kid with the 0.86. I just feel like, you know, male taking... Zulu that easily and then moving all the way down and putting that much pressure on Sneaky Kid was really rough. Akula doing well. BMD2s did really, really well. I mean, you can see BMD2s are sort of the heroes of the Soviet Union this battle. MI24 doing well. Descent Niki Metis. I believe that was the one in the trees by Alpha. Akula is doing really well. On the flip side, MI24, MiG-23. Oh, that HE, yeah, he got some great kills with his HE bomb runs. I will say Sneaky Kid had some pretty good air kills there. Uh, that Ofclor, holy cow. That must have been the one in the back line. And it must have been taking out these units in their troop transports, as you can see a lot of troop transports uh, there. So really good play on that BRM-1, but just, I, I feel like, oh, that's... That's so rough. All those MI-24s just eating it right off the beginning. Those are so expensive. Oh wait, no, no, no. Those are their kills. Yeah. Ah, flip side. It was over here where the MI-24s ate it pretty hard. Uh, M two MI-24s early. So these must have been the ones over Oscar absolutely annihilating Male's frontal push. But that was really... That was, I mean, that was the best part of Sneaky Kid's luck there and or uh, maybe not just luck but that, that was the best thing going for him was at oscar that is it for game one we will start game two shortly on to game two of sneaky kid versus male in the quarterfinals of the division four sd league tournament and on the left hand side blue player is sneaky kid playing 11e parachutiste so playing the good old Frenchies over there. And on the other side as red player, we have male and he is playing 79YA. Um, pretty good horse right there, if I do say so myself. Uh, band maps are Hess and Mount River. They are playing on Vertigo. And band divisions, 3rd Armored, 27 Motostroke, 119th Tank, and 82nd Airborne. So let's go ahead and take a look at the deployments. As I said, Sneaky Kid is blue player on the left and male is red player on the right. I generally cast from this angle, but you know, every once in a while I might cast looking this way and obviously then blue player is on the right and red on the left, but you guys are smart enough to figure that out. We'll just go Sneaky Kid blue, male, red over here. So let's take a look at where forces are going out and already I don't like this from Sneaky Kid. Um, I'm not the greatest player in the world. I consider myself on par with Division 4. But from what I've seen of people playing this, um, going heavy on the right side of the map as blue player just allows red player to roll down and capture these four objectives easily. Really, you want to capture this central location and over here and put pressure over here. Um, this is just so far away, Charlie and Delta that they're kind of like wasted resources. Um, and I believe Mail completely agrees with me here, because if you look what he is doing, he is going heavy on the right side and barely anything on the left side. Um, you can see, so he's got Motostrokies and BMP, Spetsnaz, Spetsnaz, BRM, Resvedka, 
and then a T80BK, two T oh, the flamethrower T55s, and two Osas. So, yeah, I mean, this could go really, really poorly for Sneaky Kid if Mail realizes that he's really light at Bravo, and he could just push through Bravo, get this town here, and once he takes Bravo, if he can get this tree line, these buildings here, he's basically cut off the reinforcements to Delta and Charlie. He can put pressure on Papa, and then he can slowly take Delta and Charlie if he wishes, but really he can just win the game with Papa, Bravo, Alpha, and India while blue players on Delta and Charlie, because that's, that's a plus four right there, because um, it's two to six, so... Really, I feel like this, these two objectives here, from what I have seen, and if you're a better player than me, which isn't very hard, let me know if you agree with my strategic breakdown of this map, but I feel like this is kind of a trap, and you want to put most of your resources into this area here to kind of control the middle of the map, and then over here and sort of push up over and put pressure onto Alpha. Um, and kind of keep red back at India. That would be my thought process there. So let's start game two of the quarterfinals. Forces moving out. Uh, just a quick reminder, I said this at the very beginning, but if you do like my content, I would absolutely love a subscription from you. If you don't want to subscribe, uh, a like and a comment are just as good. Uh, you could write something as simple as GG, I like turtles, or give me more cotch is a friend of mine that I've been playing the game with and he's really good. He, I think he's ranked 49 in the ranked pool and very very good 1v1 player. I'll say not as good of a multiplayer, multi-play player. That's a tongue twist there because he leaves me hanging high and dry <laughs> but on his side he always wins his matchup in multiplayer. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of jesting there. He's really good at multiplayer too. But you can see here yeah, Sneaky Kid moving troops up. I mean, he's got the Milans moving out into decent positions. Uh, should be able to do something, but I don't like such a small group. I mean, he has so many points going into Delta and Charlie. It just... I mean, if, if Mail is paying attention to this or gets any eyes on this... I would just bum rush over here, and I think he's he's kind of doing that. Like, let blue player take these two points. It's only two points. If you can rush up here, I mean, even if you take these three, you're you're at a tie. Two plus two, or one plus one plus two is four. I can math, and then your one one two is four. But if you can put pressure on Papa. It, it's just so good, so we'll see how this plays out, but I mean, it's just so many points over here. And his red player, like, I would ignore this for the early part of the battle. I mean, he hasn't even captured over here. Such a long way for his troops to go. Uh, Spetsnaz moving up, gets into that tr um, building, and he might be able to see the Milan. I don't know. He does see the Milan. He does indeed see that Milan. So, not good for Sneaky Kid whatsoever, um, and uh, hey, this is this is not good. This is all I can say is that's not good. I, I mean, he's going to see it with these para SAS, so that is going in Sneaky's favor. But what's he gonna do? He's gonna move his Gazelle over EAC 90s. I mean, EAC 90 versus T80. That's not going to go well. That's he does get a hit off on the T-80, so that's big. But it goes down. And I mean, goodness. Mail has to see that there's nothing here. There's nothing here. I mean, this gazelle's not going to do it. Especially with Osas. I don't think any air assets have come out yet. Outside of helos. I don't really consider them helos because... There are air assets. Oh gosh, yeah, as I said, it's not going to do anything with that, with the Osas. So, moving his flamethrower, oh, that's good god, yeah. What? 
Is that not a guided ATGM? That's weird. Uh, Jag takes out two... Well, takes out BMP2. I wasn't sure what else it took out. Looks like he got his flamethrower T55s and his command T80 out of the way. Um, that was really weird. I thought if you kill the ATG or the, the vehicle that's guiding the ATGM that it can no longer shoot. And it is, I mean, it's manual guidance. Sorry about that. There'll be a little, little edit there. Um, this gazelle went down to the, uh, these Osas just doing absolute work. Absolute work. I mean, it kills a BRM. LGB should kill something. Saperi kills a BTR-60. So, I mean, these are doing well. You got the VBL Milan here. The e EAC, is it EAC or no, it's ERC-90. It's like a little, uh, is it eight wheel, six wheel? Vehicle, six wheel vehicle with a big ass gun on it. I think it's a 90 millimeter is what I would imagine. Usually why you call something a 90. So he has an okay fire base over here. Problem is, what's it going to do to T-80s once those roll up? I mean, Mail has, you saw the list, but I mean, he's got four command T-80s, six T-80BVs, two T-80Bs, six flamethrower T-55s, and six conquers. So, uh, man, taking 11E into this firefight feels, it feels weird. I mean, you have lots of ATGMs, but I don't, like, you're not going to win the ATM, ATGM duel, as we can see. And here's the problem. Th this is what I said, like, he has so many resources over here as Red Player. Mail's doing exactly, to me, what Red Player should be doing in this situation. Ignoring these two zones over here, Charlie and Delta, and just putting pressure on Bravo and Papa. Bravo and Papa, that is. Does need to get his T80 BK up, although he's repairing it, so that's fine. And he's not really, uh, I mean, is it a plus two? But really, you know, setting up your firebase good. Oh, could this flamethrower? It'll be nasty if he sees those paras with the T55. Doesn't look like he's got it. BMP2 getting hit by that Milan, but now the Milan's going to go down. Just too much firepower. HE going into the building, kills Saperi, but Osa's... Osa's taking it out. Not a good trade. Cluster Bomb coming in. Uh, he fired at where he thought the command tank was, but it lived and he takes a hit. These Osa's doing incredible damage. Uh, does need to get a supply truck up though. Oh, okay, well, I, I guess either I've read his mind or he's read my mind because I say something he's done it. He is moving forces up over here. It's an okay move. I mean, he's going to take out this BMP too if... Yeah, Mail doesn't notice it. He's busy doing something else. He's busy pushing on Bravo. Yeah, this is... You'll, you'll see this happen in another video that I'm going to record. Those of you that have been following the quarterfinals and watched SD League's live play of another one will know exactly what I mean, but this happened... that This has happened before. This is why I said going over here seems to be a bad idea, whereas just, like, Red can just push over here and... Just as I said, this is going to be six points over here, and this is two points. And if my math is correct, six is a lot larger than two. At least that's what the ladies say. They always say six is more than two. And that gives you a plus four. This just feels like a waste. I mean, yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. It's going over the Osas. No. <laughs> oh, like it could have worked. If you want to be that, like go for something deep, you fly up the middle but then you have to micro the evac to the right because you know that you know mail has nothing on the right but you know there's osas over here so you cannot have your plane evac that way but this to me this battle's over 
you've got BMP twos down the road. You've got your fifty five moving up. So what do you've got? You've got these guys. I mean, they could take out the BMP twos. He does. One takes it out, and this guy should take it out. Oh, it missed. There we go. All right. So good. Good job there. These guys are amazing because they have two of these apilas, so they can absolutely shred, which very, very good there. And he's got another group of them here. He needs to get them into the trees, though. But here's the problem. Yeah, you took out the BMP2s. Very, very good. But now you've got all these Moto Strelki in Bravo. I wonder... I wish I could see who places... Oh, I can see. Oh, very cool. Okay, so... I don't get why he placed his own attack beacon there. Kind of interesting. Very good. These these guys are amazing. But they're not even the ones that killed it, were they? It was the Legion Paris? Legionaries Paris? And the S is silent, isn't it? Because it's French. You don't pronounce half the letters when you uh, <laughs> pronounce French. If anybody speaks French, I clearly don't. I'm just your typical ignorant American when it comes to the French language. Uh, let me know about the S. I think it's Legionnaire. Ara? I believe the S is silent. I'm not sure. Gazelle Hot 2, I mean, it's taking up a good position. But, and we're at parity here. But just having all these Moto Strokey here is so bad. And it gives time. I mean, really, he needs to absolutely decimate these guys in the middle but that's easier said than done because you've got para sas and you've got the uh, para group anti char which i believe is just like anti-tank is char tank anti armor char is armor i'm not really sure but if i was learning french and uh from a military perspective that makes sense because usually like in german and spanish you put the uh like armor or tank or whatever it is as part of the word. But yeah, these Moto Strelki, they're in buildings and they're doing work. Now that's a cheeky shot over there. Oh, but it got out of line of sight. I mean, these guys are dead. Once they're dead, take out this Milan too, which only has three shots left and no support. Yeah, I mean, he was taking it up the rear and from the side. He was basically getting Eiffel Towered by the French over there. Um, Moto Strokey, though, holding off really well. BTR-60 going down, but it's only got... Well, it has two shots left. So, I mean, it could do work. Two BTR-6... Three BTR-60s. So, this is just simple math here. Yes, it might kill two of them, but there'll be one left, and the last remaining BTR-60 should do work. And... He's getting out of line of sight? No, he doesn't. Okay. I mean, this Milan is doing fantastic work, but it has no supply behind it. And now T-80s from range just going to hit it and it's out of ATGMs. So yeah, got a hit on the T-80, but can't do any follow-up. Now you do have this little guy, another ERC-90, but I mean, it's not going to be T-55s and T-80s moving up. Interesting, though, from Mail at this point. I feel like, well, he's probably just not overextending. I mean, these Moto Strokey have held out way longer than they should have. If he can kill these guys, that would be huge. Doesn't look like he's targeting those guys. He might not be able to see them. I mean, all of these guys, they're dead. These guys are on 1 HP or whatever. They don't have anybody left. So if the Motostroke, he can kill them. There we go. I think he might do it. I think this Motostroke, he, uh, well, you know, that's rather unfortunate for the Motostroke. But these Motostroke, absolutely heroes of the Soviet Union, whereas the French, and I believe there's British in here, right? They're British. No, Sniper SES. Maybe it just says it's French because they're part of a French division, but SAS is usually a British thing. In here, helicopters, gazelle hot twos. I mean, they're cheap, right? They're 65 points. They're reasonably cheap. They're not the... Aren't there like 40-point aircraft or helos in the game? 
I mean, he's got a lot of them moving up, but he has no board presence. LGB, though, should take out the T-80. It does. Good thing he targeted. But the Osas! The Osas are just ripping him to pieces. Finally, he peels off this direction. Thank goodness. Uh, but that MiG-29 might get in range. Ooh, I don't know if it will. Nope, does not. But... Screw your gazelles. That's basically what he's done. Yep. Now he's going for all the gazelles. I mean, absolutely just picking them apart. So for new players, don't be fooled here. While Sneaky Kid has a 291 to zero advantage here, uh, Mail is very much in control of this battle. He has put pressure on Bravo. He doesn't really care about what is this again delta and charlie and if he can take bravo he's got that plus two tick and really by pushing up the middle getting the center makes it really hard for sneaky kid to reinforce either location and over here combined arms push best way to do it get your motor stroke infantry out first have the enemy infantry reveal themselves and the bmp2s just shoot the bejesus out of them. I mean, if this T-80 was a little bit further, it could help out, but it's the command T-80, so probably not a good move. What did that fire at? Where are those bombs going? That would have been hilarious if it took out the truck. Like, I don't know where those clusters were going. So VBL Milan, should take out BMP. Uh, smoked off. Good micro there. Stunned though. So actually not not as good micro as I thought. But BTR-60 is destroyed. More air. I don't... I feel like this is a Division 4 thing. And I, I don't mean that in a mean way because I do this. Is like because you haven't played enough games when you get behind you like panic instinct into like oh bring aircraft and helicopters and whatnot uh to try and stem the bleeding but it's it's kind of like putting a band-aid on the titanic when it hits the iceberg right like you're you're not you're not solving the problem because the problem here for sneaky kid is board presence and like i say this is hopefully maybe a learning experience because this is what i'm learning these are the mistakes I'm making as a player that would basically be Division 4 is board presence. Panic panic purchases. Like purchasing air assets when you're behind and you have no board presence. Like he needs he needs infantry. He needs ATGMs. He needs well, he doesn't have tanks, so <laughs> but he needs tanks. Um I mean, he, I mean, he's going to get overwhelmed here. Now, I don't like the T-80 just rolling up like that with no infantry support whatsoever because he should know that there's two infantry left over there and they will take it out. So really, he he should just sit... Oh, yeah. See, this is bad. Their T-80 is going to die. At least I think it's going to die. Right? Yeah. So that was that was really good by Sneaky Kid, and a weird lapse from Mail. Like he's been playing fairly well with his micro, um, in terms of a Division Four player. Like I'm I'm pretty impressed. He it feels like he's probably put in a decent amount of work from the beginning of this tournament to the end of this tournament to get better. And here's the problem: Mail has taken the center. He's taken what is this again? Bravo. Oh, so what have we been calling this? Papa. So now he can put pressure on Papa, and he can put pressure on Delta. And because Sneaky Kid keeps buying air assets when he has no board control, I mean, look, these two heli helicopters, they're going to die. Okay, they live. They should have died. <laughs> well, they got no missiles left. But, like, this is not board presence. This is okay board presence. A... Okay, sure, but he needs infantry. He absolutely needs infantry if he's going to get back into this game. 
He needs to stabilize. He needs infantry. He needs 80 gems. He needs to create a new front line to try and take out all of this. That's brutal. That's brutal. Yeah. I don't really know what else to say in that regards. I mean, he's... He's killing things, but it, it, it it's not efficient. You can just look at the kill feed, like Paris destroyed, Gazelle Hot 2 destroyed, a T-55 destroyed, T-55 is 65 points. The Legion Paras are 100 points. Maybe they're 100 points because of their uh, transport, so they're probably 80 points. The VBL Milan is 70 points, Gazelle Hot 2 is 65, he finally killed a BTR-60, the MI-24, that's a good kill, that's 170 points, no it's the AT, there's the P, yeah so that's 170 points, but I mean he just lost his entire board presence in the middle there, and I wouldn't be surprised if he concedes any moment now. Uh, I don't remember the exact time of this battle, obviously I do have the time of the battle available to me, but I'm trying to come at this from sort of a, I don't really know what's going to happen in this battle, even though I know who the winner is. I don't know the specifics of the battle of what's going on, and basically what I can tell you is Sneaky Kid put too many resources onto the right side of the battlefield and Mail punished him. Mail, Mail definitely punished him over here. Um, now Mail... I feel like Mail needs to make this push, but he's probably... Uh, it doesn't really matter. Once he takes Delta, and that's a commander over here, he's going to go down. It's a 3 verse one I mean, it's not, not looking good for the French. It's kind of like... Uh, It's, it's just, it's not looking good for the French. Not looking good for the French at all. I mean, you basically equate this to like, this was the Maginot line, and this was, this was Belgium. And this, they just went around the Maginot line through Belgium. So there you have it. Oh, that feels so bad. 1.79 to 1 kill ratio, 0.56 to 1 kill ratio. I said this uh, earlier on. I, I feel like choosing eleven E. I, I don't. I don't recall if he knew what male was playing first. I'd have to go back and look at the the pick orders. But I feel like on this map, regardless, like I, maybe I'm wrong, but eleven E doesn't feel like a good division on this map because it, it doesn't have any armor whatsoever. Feels like 11e is more for like urban fighting, maybe like heavy trees because of all the ATGMs that can get sight lines there, but I, I just feel like he had nothing to deal with the T80s. He had he had a boatload of ATGMs, but the problem with the ATGMs he had is one hit from a T80 and they're basically dead. It's either like one shot, one kill, or a two tap. And yeah, not I, I don't know if 11e was a decision. Definitely going right for Sneaky Kid, definitely not the right decision. I mean, I feel like his micro and some of the decisions he made were pretty good, just the macro strategy I feel like was where he lost the battle. These Osas, absolutely devastating though. BMP2s are always amazing, Osa's really good, got some good kills with his mix, this Moto Strokey. <laughs> That's... Those are insane kills right there. bmp 2s you can see, just having a field day, um, being fire support, Igla's. So, like, nothing crazy over the top besides that Moto Strokey, in my opinion. And then over here, like, he had some good kills with Milan's, Legion Para uh, Paras, Paramarines, Milan's, Milan's, Anti-Tank Para, the one that got the double BMP2 kill. In I think that was Papa, but just not not clean trading, and I, I feel like that was a problem mostly with the division he chose, and then panic attacks or panic buys 
with all of the air assets he purchased in that game and then constantly uh, evacuating them over the Osas and the Iglas was not not helping his cause either. So that is it. We have Mail winning this series 2-0. So Mail will go on to the semifinals. So, so far we have Pasta La Vista and Mail moving on to the semis. We will have the two other series of the quarterfinals coming up soon. I believe the players have played their battles. So I just need to download those replays and cast them. Uh, so this comes out on a Monday. So we'll have another quarterfinals on Wednesday and the final quarterfinals on a Friday. And then I will probably film something not SE League related on Saturday. And then Sunday, we will probably be starting the semifinals. And then it'll... I don't know if I'll do uh, all the games in one video. Let me know, guys, if you like all of the games in a series in one video. If you'd like me to spread them out on uh, different videos. Or maybe when we get to the finals, we could do um each finals game its own video maybe that's the way to go let me know in the comments below if you're still watching this far and if you are still watching this far thank you so much for supporting me thank you for viewing this um as i said earlier a subscription is always amazing but if you don't want to subscribe to the channel a comment and a like really really helps get these videos out there uh, that was terrible English on my part, but you understand what I said. And as I said before, a simple comment like GG or I like turtles is all it takes to beat the YouTube gods and their algorithm. So that is it for today's episode. As always, guys, until next time.